Although it sounds like something from a movie, scientists have just revealed that they plan on using mosquitoes like flying syringes and said they will start administering crucial malaria vaccines. According to a recent report, individuals participating in a clinical trial recently had their arms enclosed in mesh containers containing 200 mosquitoes. The outcome of this experiment was quite surprising, as one participant experienced the formation of red, elevated blisters on their entire forearm, resembling chemical burns. Photos may possess the power to convey a myriad of meanings, and while photographs are certainly intriguing, the research conducted on this latest technique holds equal significance. Recently, a group of scientists from the Seattle Children's Research Institute, the National Institutes of Health, and other establishments shared their discoveries in the August publication, Science Translational Medicine, shedding light on the underlying approach behind the phenomenon. The researchers genetically modified the mosquitoes by introducing the Plasmodium falciparum parasites. Unlike previous attempts at creating malaria immunization using parasites, this is the first time this technology has been employed to modify the parasites in a way that allows them to carry malaria without causing illness in humans. According to University of Washington, Seattle researcher Sean Murphy, mosquitoes are like 1,000 tiny flying syringes that they will utilize in their research. Throughout the research, out of the total 26 participants, 14 individuals were exposed to malaria and approximately half of them acquired the disease. This implies that the current effectiveness of the method stands at approximately 50%, indicating potential for enhancement. Contrary to expectations, researchers explained that the objective is not to release a large number of mosquitoes that protect against malaria instead of transmitting it. This proposition is certainly fascinating, but it would give rise to significant concerns regarding bioethics and medical consent. Rather than stating it outright, they have mentioned that they are simply investigating a potentially economical approach for creating and distributing immunization. A United States company has announced that it plans to release 2.4 billion genetically modified mosquitoes into the wild. The insects, which have been developed by biotech company Oxitec, will be male individuals that do not bite and are genetically modified to only produce male offspring that are capable of reproducing, as stated by the company. The Environmental Protection Agency has given approval for the release of 2.4 billion genetically modified mosquitoes in California and Florida. These mosquitoes, developed by biotech company Oxitec, are non-biting male mosquitoes that have been genetically engineered to ensure that their offspring are only male and capable of reproducing. Oxitec claims that this approach will help decrease the population of the invasive Aedes aegypti mosquitoes, which are known carriers of diseases such as Zika and yellow fever. Female mosquitoes will perish, whereas males will procreate and transmit the self-restricting gene to the succeeding generation ultimately resulting in a decrease in population. Although these diseases are not currently being transmitted in California, the invasive insect has been identified as an escalating threat as their population expands throughout the state. Oxitec CEO Gray Franson states that due to the increasing health risk posed by this mosquito in the United States, they are actively striving to make this technology widely accessible. As part of this effort, they are conducting pilot programs to showcase the effectiveness of the technology in various climate conditions. These programs are crucial in achieving their goal of making the technology available to address the growing health threat. According to Oxitec, the mosquitoes will be equipped with a genetic marker, making it simple for scientists to distinguish them from other mosquitoes in the wild. The company states that the current experiment is an expansion of a previous pilot project approved by the EPA in 2020. Oxitec released 144,000 genetically modified mosquitoes in the Florida Keys during 2021 and also conducted a release in Brazil. They assert that after 13 weeks, this technology was successful in suppressing 95% of the Aedes aegypti population. Mustafa Daboon, an expert in medical and veterinary entomology and the general manager of the Delta Mosquito and Vector Control District, said that it's a clever solution noting that rather than relying on human intervention to apply pesticides and eliminate these mosquitoes, they are harnessing male mosquitoes to carry out the task on our behalf. It's a battle between nature and nature itself. However, 
skeptics remain unconvinced about the absolute safety of the mosquitoes. According to Dana Pearls, the program manager for food and technology at Friends of the Earth, there isn't a concept of absolute effectiveness in science. Pearls questions the public's trust in Oxitec's experiment, expressing concern about whether it can guarantee the eradication of genetically engineered female mosquitoes. The question is, how can we be certain of its success? The opponents express their concern regarding the female mosquito's exposure to tetracycline, an antibiotic commonly utilized in agriculture. The use of this antibiotic may enable the survival of female mosquitoes. Supporters argue that mosquitoes typically do not venture beyond a 500-foot radius from their place of origin. According to regulations imposed by the EPA, the release of these mosquitoes is prohibited within a 500-meter distance from wastewater treatment facilities, areas where commercial citrus, apple, pear, nectarine and peach are grown, as well as commercial livestock producers of cattle, poultry and pigs. As of right now, there's many who are against this and they've said that we don't know if there will be any side effects. Those against these genetically engineered mosquitoes have said that this is new territory. Nonetheless, skeptics argue that additional testing should be conducted within regulated settings. According to Dr. Robert Gould, the president of San Francisco Bay Physicians for Social Responsibility, genetically modified mosquitoes, once introduced to the environment, cannot be retrieved. Instead of proceeding with an unsupervised and unrestricted genetic experiment, he emphasizes the importance of taking precautionary measures, ensuring transparency in data, and conducting appropriate risk assessments. Mosquitoes are carriers, or vectors, for several disease-causing viruses and parasites. They acquire these pathogens by feeding on an infected host and later transmit them to other individuals during subsequent feedings. Because of this cycle, Mosquitoes serve as a bridge for pathogens to move between hosts, effectively spreading disease across populations. Perhaps the most well-known mosquito-borne disease is malaria. In addition to malaria, mosquitoes are responsible for spreading numerous other diseases. Moreover, the threat mosquitoes pose is magnified by their adaptability and widespread distribution. Over 3,000 mosquito species exist worldwide inhabiting every continent except Antarctica. Their ability to reproduce quickly and thrive in a variety of habitats allows for rapid disease transmission across diverse geographic areas. Different climates further exacerbates the threat of mosquitoes by creating more suitable environments for their proliferation. Increased rainfall provides more breeding sites for mosquitoes, leading to higher population densities and increasing the risk of disease transmission. Efforts to control the mosquito population and thus curb disease transmission are continuously ongoing. Genetic engineering has brought about a new epoch in biological sciences, with genetically modified organisms becoming more prevalent. While the genetic modification of animals promises various benefits, such as improved disease resistance or productivity, it also poses substantial risks to ecosystems. Genetically modified animals if accidentally or intentionally introduced into natural habitats, could significantly disrupt ecosystems. These animals might possess advantages over their non-genetically modified counterparts, such as enhanced disease resistance or faster growth rates. These traits could allow genetically modified animals to outcompete native species for resources. Over time, this competition could lead to reductions in biodiversity as native species struggle to survive. In addition to outcompeting native species, genetically modified animals could also disrupt food chains and cycles within ecosystems. For instance, if a genetically modified animal occupies a crucial position in the food chain, changes in its population could resonate up and down the chain. This could result in population crashes or booms in other species, causing further imbalance in the ecosystem. A significant risk posed by genetically modified animals to ecosystems is the potential for the uncontrolled spread of modified genes. Once one of these animals is released into the wild, it is nearly impossible to prevent it from breeding with non-genetically modified individuals of the same species. Over time, the modified genes could spread throughout the population, a phenomenon known as gene flow. This could result in the entire population expressing the genetic modification, with unknown effects on the ecosystem. Moreover, 
there is the risk of genetically modified animals potentially accelerating the spread of diseases. While certain genetic modifications aim to increase resistance to diseases, they could unintentionally make other species more susceptible. If genetically modified animals act as reservoirs for diseases, they could increase the risk of disease transmission to other species, with catastrophic implications for ecosystems. Even the purposeful release of these animals could have unintended ecological consequences. As mentioned, genetically modified mosquitoes designed to combat malaria have been released into ecosystems, with the idea that they would outcompete the disease-carrying population. However, the ecological implications of this practice are still not fully understood. There are concerns about potential ripple effects on species that prey on mosquitoes and other unknown ecological impacts. Lastly, it's important to note that ecosystems are complex and interconnected. Changes to one component of the system can result in cascading effects that are hard to predict. Genetic modifications can result in unforeseen changes in behavior or physiology that could disrupt delicate ecological balances in ways we do not yet fully understand. The advent of genetic engineering has redefined the boundaries of what's possible in biological science. Although it carries the potential for numerous benefits, such as combating diseases and improving food production, the genetic modification of animals also raises several ethical and ecological concerns. One of the main arguments against genetically modifying animals is the ethical issue of animal welfare. Genetic modifications often involve the insertion of new genetic material into an animal's DNA, a process that can cause unintended physical and psychological suffering. For instance, certain strains of genetically modified mice used in scientific research have been found to exhibit higher levels of aggression, anxiety, and other problematic behaviors compared to non-modified mice. Such outcomes demonstrate the potential for unexpected and harmful side effects that can lead to undue suffering for the animals involved. The ethical implications extend beyond the immediate suffering of individual animals. When we modify an animal's genetic makeup to serve our purposes, we risk commodifying them and disregarding their intrinsic value as living beings. This commodification can lead to a dangerous, slippery slope, where animals are seen less as sentient beings with rights and more as objects that can be manipulated at will. In addition to the ethical implications, there are also ecological considerations. Animals play crucial roles in their ecosystems, and changes to their genetics can upset the delicate balance of these systems. Genetically modified animals, if accidentally or intentionally introduced into the wild, could potentially outcompete native species or disrupt established food chains. This could lead to unforeseen changes in biodiversity and ecosystem health. Moreover, we must consider the potential for uncontrollable spread of modified genes through a population once a genetically modified animal has been introduced into the wild. This concern is not theoretical. It has been realized with genetically modified mosquitoes intended to combat disease-carrying populations. Despite initial containment efforts, modified genes have been found in the natural mosquito population, leading to unforeseeable consequences. There's also the question of long-term effects. Genetics is a complex field, and it's impossible to predict all the consequences of introducing new genetic material into an animal. There may be hidden costs and repercussions of genetic modification that won't become apparent until much later, when it may be too late to reverse the damage. Lastly, the concept of playing God with the genetic makeup of living creatures raises profound philosophical and moral questions. So, what do you make of genetically engineered mosquitoes? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.